What makes a character strong in Street Fighter VI? This is a question that has plagued mankind since the beginning. Here, for example, is a recent tier list made by Mago that's got a lot of uh, people talking. Top one, Ed, is an interesting one to go with. And bottom one, Terry, is also something. <laughs> I don't know what to make of that, but I've been thinking a little bit lately about Street Fighter 6's overall meta game, and I've been trying to put together a list of five things that I think are necessary tools for a character to be strong in this game. Uh, it was actually surprisingly hard because the first draft of this list ended up like this. All right, so my original, <laughs> my original draft of this was uh, five things. Number one, Invincible Reversal. Like something like this. Uh, number two, a command grab. Something like this. Uh, number three, crouch medium kick drive rush. Something like this. Uh, number four, ways to change your jump trajectory. Something like this. And number five, plus on block mediums. Something like that. So just as I was finishing that list, I suddenly had a realization. Every single one of those things that I just listed is a thing that Jamie has. Jamie has every single one of those traits that I just listed. And uh, Jamie is arguably the worst character in the game right now. Despite the fact that he has all those things. You know, he has an EXDP. He has low forward drive rush. He can get a command grab with a few drinks. Once he gets lit, he has a really good command grab. So I had to go back to the drawing board. My 1.0 version of this video idea fell through. I, I went back to the drawing board and I came up with a new list of five things that I think make characters strong in this game. Before we get started though, let me try a little bit of reverse psychology. Don't subscribe to this YouTube channel. I would be really mad if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. All right, let's see if that works. <laughs> Unsubbed. It's gonna be fun watching my sub count fucking nosedive after that. Anyway, let's get into the video. Number one, I'm uh, picking Ken for this for some very obvious reasons. Corner carry. So the number one biggest indicator, I think, of a strong character in this game is corner carry. And it's not surprising that I've picked Ken. I'm sure you guys know why. So in fighting games generally, the corner is death, right? We all know that. It depends on the game a little bit, but especially in Street Fighter 6, getting cornered in this game is death. And who is better at that than Kenneth Masters? This character can corner you from any hit anywhere on the screen. Something like this. So something like that. Ken, as we all know, is a corner carry monster. That was almost the entire stage from one drive rush. And it gets even more stupid than that because realistically in this position, you shouldn't even be doing that combo because as well as having the obscene amount of corner carry that he has on run Tatsu, he also has uh, this as well. So even if he starts with his back to the corner, he can just do Dragon Lash and side switch you back into the corner. Something like that. The other thing I should mention when it comes to corner carry is specifically low cost corner carry because I know a few of you are saying, well, most characters in this game can do lots of corner carry if they spend lots of resources. One of the most important thing that you can have as well as having good corner carry is have it be low cost. So for whatever reason, Ken's side switch is completely meterless. So Ken's a good example of this. That's, that's trait number one, massive corner carry with low meter cost. I guess I'll show one other character as well who has big corner carry. Probably not quite as much as Ken, but still one of the strongest high corner carry characters. Especially if you go into level one. That's a lot of corner carry. So number two on my list, I've written down as privileged throw loop. And you might be wondering what the hell does a privileged throw loop mean? So... I think one thing that people don't talk about em enough in uh, in this game is like the fact that not all throw loops are born equal. So if you guys don't know, every single character in this game other than Chun-Li and E Honda has a throw loop. But even within all of those characters that do have throw loops, there is kind of like power levels to it. And uh, the ones that I would describe as privileged throw loops are characters who can do this. that 
If your character can forward dash after their throw and still shimmy, like they're, they're so plus after their forward throw knockdown, that even after a dash, you have time to shimmy. I consider that to be like an ascended throw loop. That's even stronger than a base throw loop. So like a couple of examples of characters who have this is like Akuma has this, Rashid has this, DJ has this. It's, it's an extremely important thing to have. And the reason this is important is if we compare it to a non-privileged throw loop. Let me, let me show you guys an example of a, a throw loop that I actually think is like a lot easier to deal with. Let's, let's do jury. So just to be clear, I hate throw loops. I think they're a crappy mechanic and I want them gone. But if throw loops do have to stay in this game, they should all work like juries. Juries has actually got a lot more counterplay. She has to commit a lot more than someone like Akuma. Because the thing about the thing about Jury's throw loop is that she gets pushed so far away, like this, she's like this distance, that the only way for her to get back into your face is to forward dash, like this. And after the forward dash, she's only plus three. And what this means is that the throw loop looks like this. But Jury cannot shimmy after the forward dash, which is a really important distinction. So if we do the exact same recording as before, and I try, I try and forward dash into a shimmy, I get thrown out of it. She does not have enough time to walk back out of throw range after forward dashing. So that means that the only way that a Jury player can actively like hard counter delay tech here is if she does something high commitment like a neutral jump or a delayed button like that but yeah she can backdash as well but it's also high commitment obviously you can't block while you're backdashing so for example if rather than waking up with delay tech they wake up with like a jab for example you just lose the other, the other thing about jury's uh throw loop is that because she's only plus three after the forward dash it means that her throw loop will always lose and get punished if your opponent does backdash in the corner, which is a really important distinction. So like that, for example. So I consider Jury's throw loop to actually be one of the one of the weaker throw loops in the game. So like one one last advantage of having a privileged throw loop is the extra frame advantage after dashing lets you do meaties to give yourselves like bonus plus frames. So Akuma's stand medium punch, for example, is normally only plus one. But if we do dash, we can do it meaty and make it like plus. That one was plus four. So yeah, number two, privileged throw loop havers. Okay, so the next trait, number three of a strong character in this game is EX move heavy combo structure, which is a kind of a mouthful, but I'll explain what I mean. Let's do bison for this one. This is one that I haven't seen that many people talk about. But I think it's actually a really important character trait in this game. It's if your combo routing uses lots of EX moves rather than drive rushes and drive rush cancels. And the reason why that's a benefit might not be initially obvious if you don't know how this game's system mechanics work. So let me show you like a, a basic uh, Bison combo. Into Oki. What do you guys notice about this combo? Question for chat. Meter regain, drive regen, correct. So, an important feature of this game's system mechanics is that if you use EX moves, you are not locked out of drive recovery in the way that you are for doing a drive rush cancel. So for example, if I do a combo like this, watch my drive gauge as Bison. Do you see how I'm locked at three bars? after doing the drive rush like it never starts to regenerate until the combo is over so this is an expensive combo but if you use ex moves in your combo notice how as soon as the ex move is finished i start regenerating drive and then by the time that i've done my meaty back heavy kick that two bar investment has practically paid for itself you get one bar back just for finishing the combo and then probably another bar back by the time you're finished your uh, pressure string afterwards. It's an extremely important thing to have in this game. Anything that brings down the cost of drive and also encourages your drive to regen faster is a massive benefit to have. 
So let me, I'll, I'll show you one other character that has this feature again. <laughs> You'll notice me jumping to Akuma quite a lot. There's a reason for that. It's almost like he's a pretty strong character. So here's another example, starting with an EX move. So again, as well as doing massive damage, because Akuma's combo only used an EX move and no drive rush cancels, he practically just gets a complete refund on his drive investment. And those that two bar ends up being more like less than one. That's a good thing to have. That's a very strong feature. I'm actually going to select Aki for the next one. It's almost like Aki's a strong character. Who'd have thunk it? All right, number four. Tech or die, I've called this. And what I mean by this is characters who can set up a condition in this game where the risk of going for a delay tech is so massively skewed that it almost makes the throw guaranteed. So for example, Aki's poison is a good example of this. If I get a knockdown and my opponent is poisoned and they, know, they understand the, the risk reward, like this is more of like a high level mind game. My opponent knows now that they're poisoned, if they try and tech a throw here and I shimmy while they're poisoned, they are going to explode, right? So for example, So one shimmy with the poison on you, 65% of your health gone. And it could be more. If the puddle is underneath you like that as well, it could go even higher. It can be like over 70%. So this is an extremely strong feature because your opponent basically has to let themselves get thrown. They, they are risking so much if they go for a tech here. So you almost get guaranteed damage in this situation because if my opponent is risk averse and they're aware that teching here is a bad idea, I can just start throwing. And I can just keep looping the throw with the knowledge that the fact that the poison was on them for the first two throws is enough of a mental mind game that they almost have to take the throw. Like, it's an extremely powerful thing to have. So Aki has this. Bison's Bomb is like the perfect example of this. There we go. So again, with Bison, if you've got that bomb on you, and you attempt a bad delay tech, that's 7,400 damage with no, with no critical art, by the way. All right, with critical art. <laughs> 7,650 damage. It's not just the damage though, I wanna reiterate this. The point I'm making here is not necessarily high damage characters, because Marissa is a high damage character. I'm talking specifically about characters that can set some kind of condition that makes you aware that if you go for a bad throw tech, you are going to fucking explode. It's not so much about the damage, so much as it is about establishing that mind game. All right, number five. My final feature of a extremely strong character, I've written down as hard counters to throw. As we talked a little bit earlier, I did mention throws are extremely strong in this game. Whether mid-screen or throw loops in the corner, throw is extremely powerful in this game. And one of the reasons for that is that there is almost no hard counter to a throw in Street Fighter 6. So in a situation like this, this is very common. Your opponent will do a drive rush into a jab to give themselves like plus two, plus three advantage. And then they'll tick throw afterwards. And... Despite the fact that I might know this throw is coming, I might read the Terry player, there is actually, for most characters in this game, almost no counter to this. In, this. in the sense that a counter where I can actually get damage. Like, I might be able to like backdash out of the situation, but I can't actually punish this. So I might be able to escape the situation, but I can't actually counter it. The one, one of the things you can do, obviously, is invincible reversals. Like, that is an option, but that's not really a counter, and it's also super high risk. You could even argue that spending two bars here for no Oki isn't even that good for the Kami player. So I don't count this as a counter, really. 
The thing that I do count as a counter is this. That. This is one of the strongest things you can have in this game. An actual full combo counter off a throw attempt. Kami can do it with instant air jump dive kick. So not only do you get to reverse the situation, you can get a full combo off it. But this is a guaranteed punish on throw. And the reason it's particularly powerful for Kami, I think, is because a lot of the time, if your opponent shimmies, you're still safe. Like, this covers a lot of options. So let's say your opponent goes for a shimmy here instead and you still do it. Minus two on block. Sometimes it might even be plus on block. It probably depends on the opponent's walk speed. But having an option which will both punish throw and is safe on block against shimmy is extremely good defensively in this game. There are so few characters that can do this. But if your character can do this, that is a very good thing to have. Uh, off the top of my head, Chun-Li can do it with instant air legs. Blanka can do it with instant air Blanka ball. Uh, Jamie can do this one, that is true. But I, I specifically vetted this list so that I think that's the only one of the five that Jamie has this time. So I've, I've covered from my previous mistake. Having only one of these things is okay. That doesn't prove that Jamie's top tier. Yeah, Rashid has it. For most characters, it's like an instant air option. Oh, there you go. Punish counter. Okay, I learned something new today. Rashid's is good, but you have to, like, plink from jump medium punch to make it a punish counter. All right, that is hard to do, though. I'll give Rashid players a bit of credit for that one. Oh, yeah, I'll I guess I'll give one more example of this that might not be as obvious. So, I've shown a few options which involve doing a jump move to punish a throw. There is one more option that you can do for, for that's only really viable for Geef and for Lily. So if your character has a bunch of extra pre-jump frames, you can also do a jump cancel. Usually jump cancel SPD. Uh, I've never attempted a jump cancel SPD in this game before, so this might take three attempts or it might take 500 attempts. Oh, there you go. Two attempts. It's not too bad. <laughs> so yeah, if you can hard punish a throw attempt in this game, rather than just escape the situation, it's very powerful. So yeah, so uh, those are my five uh, traits that I think make a character strong in this game. But let me know what you guys think. Do you agree with my list? Is there other things you would include? The tricky thing here is to not fall into the trap that I fell into at the beginning. So when you guys make your own lists, ask yourself, do all five of these apply to Jamie? That's the trap that a lot of people fall into. Uh, anyway, remember to hit that sub button and I will see you guys all in the next video.